In this video, we would learn about the concepts behind salting in and salting out. In biochemistry, these concepts are pretty confusing and people don't have a clear idea about this. So stay tuned at the end of this video because at the end of this video, it would be totally clear to you. Let's say you have a protein solution. And with this protein solution, you are going to do two experiments. In the first set of experiment, you have added a salt solution where the ionic strength is not too high. And you have noticed that with mild increase in the salt concentration, the increase of the solubility. And there is no visible precipitate in this tube and everything is soluble. In the second case, you have added salt solution which has very high ionic strength and it's very concentrated solution. And in this particular case, you have seen without increasing the solubility, the solubility is dramatically decreased and there is a visible pellet inside as well. So if you plot a graph with solubility versus the salt concentration, you initially see an increase in solubility with increase of salt concentration. But later, with the increase of salt concentration, there is a decrease in the solubility. The first phenomena is popularly known as salting in. With increase of salt concentration, there is increase in solubility. And the second condition is known as salting out. With very high salt concentration, the proteins are precipitated out. But have you ever wondered how this thing actually works at a molecular level? So in order to understand that, you need to know about the protein structure a little bit. So you know in protein structure, there are many ions, right? And there are many amino acids which could be charged. For example, there are aspartate or glutamate which could be negatively charged. There are also possibilities that there are lysine, arginine, this kind of basic residues and based on the pH, these residues would be charged. So protein would have some charge on it, right? It's, it's totally legitimate. Now, salting, is, salting in is the phenomena where the increase in ionic strength is actually increasing the solubility constant or increasing the solubility of the protein. So how does that happen? So this effect is only and only observed in lower ionic strengths and different for different proteins and a Debye-Huckel theory can actually explain the phenomena. So let's look at it. So at very low salt concentration, let's look at the molecular interaction inside the solution. So this is the protein. Its negative and the positive charges are kind of masked by our salt counter ions, okay? And now these salt counter ions are effectively masking all the different sort of charges of the protein and then the solvent ion in this case the water is actually creating a hydration shell around the protein and you have more solute and solvent interaction than the solute solute interaction as a result the protein is nice happy in this environment and soluble you don't see any precipitate and you say the protein is solu soluble, right? But imagine a situation when you have added too much of salt. Let's say in this case, the salt is NaCl and that's why you have so many this Na plus ions. Now this Na plus ion would love to interact with water molecules and the protein is somewhere ignored. So very less amount of water molecule is interacting with the protein and try to cre create the hydration shell around it and try to solve it. Rather, all of these water molecules are interacting with the sodium plus ion or the salt ions. So here, what happens in short is as the sodium ions are taking away all of these water molecules, our solute particles, that means our protein particles, are interacting with one another. And the solute-solute interaction is much more than the solute-solvent interaction. As a result, the protein gets precipitated. So that is the concept behind salting in and salting out. So in this situation, we are going to call it as salting out. And you can see the visible pre precipitate in the protein, right? Now, what we learned from so far is that low salt concentration, the protein is effectively, the protein's charge is effectively masked by the counter ions and the hydration shell is nicely formed around it. As a result, this protein is soluble. But with very high salt concentration, 
all of the solute molecules are interacting with each other rather than interacting with the solvent molecules. So solute solute interaction is much more higher than the solute solvent interaction. As a result, it's pre precipitating. And there is some series known as Hopminster series, which actually tells us that using which type of salt counter ions, we can precipitate what type of proteins. And actually, this is a very crude method of protein separation because different protein has different solubility and using different salt concentration you can precipitate different proteins based on their properties but that requires a prior information about the protein's ionic situation otherwise it's impossible to know and uh, which range you need to solve i mean to precipitate the protein and separate it out so that's why it's a very crude method as well so i hope this video was informative and quick so if you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. But do leave a comment at the end of this video because your comment gives me so much positive motivation to make more such videos. And do let me know that what other topics you want to know about in biochemistry. I'll make videos on that. Thank you. Thanks for your, thanks for your attention and listening.